I'll put this workshop together or this exhibition together just to raise awareness that these more, well, that these traditional instruments do exist and they are getting played out there in the world and here in Aotearoa. Puro is to be used for its purpose, not to sit on a mental piece and sit there for years gathering dust. It was uh, it's actually an instrument, a functional instrument you can take out and play. I use tōtara and matai because the uh, acoustics within the raku is awesome. Yeah, different to the other raku, it's quite resonant. We also use stone, uh, we use ostrich, use emu. So the rarer the material, the more kind of mana you get like, oh, he's got a more bang, mm, he's the man. <laughs> Plus when they're singing, you feel the wairua coming back out of them anyway. Puro watu, puro mai. With the puro, uh, they played a big part in the uh, uh, creation. Rangi and Papa, they played a big part in that. And uh, a lot of the atua, this is all the whanau here singing, and they were present in the separation of Rangi and Papa. Uh, that's one version, there could be others out there, but that's on and off. To understand the whenua is another thing we watch out for, especially in uh, Rangatahi. They've got a strong affinity with the land, they're going to probably get into this. Especially knowing where the material is from and what it once was before they turned it into an instrument. Yeah, kia ora.